Hello and welcome back to KSP Replications Tutorials. This time we're going to be building the Avro Canada CF-105. Now obviously it's a fighter jet, specifically a fighter bomber for this particular design and we're going to be looking at how to sort of work through a thought process to determine what parts we need and also look at built-up designs. So we can see from this plane it's rather large delta wing and it's got quite a boxy fuselage and square intakes that come up into round engines now we won't be able to get this thin style looking main fuselage but we can do our best so jumping into the space plane hangar we see that it would be best to use an inline cockpit. So we'll just get one of those, empty out the monoprop as usual, and straight away get into making the nose cone. Now I'm building this in version 0 0.90, so a version back from where the game currently is. That's so that I can use a series of mods to be able to get the design a bit more accurate. So like we learned in the last episode using the offset and rotate tools to get the look that we desire. And now you see that it's a very long sort of plane. So I know from experience that if this is the back of the cockpit then it'll take one, two, and a bit uh, double length one meter tanks to get that length or thereabouts so we'll just do that so that's what we got that's what we need we're getting there and now I think we can put in one standard size tank and to get this little kick up at the end we can do a similar thing to what we just did on the nose and get the uh, adapter and for the back of it we'll uh, put on an instrument module because why not and then same thing just skew and rotate and there we are that's our central fuselage now for these intakes can be a little tricky but what I've found is to first of all get the engines done first and for the engines it's pretty easy we just get these double length tanks again now I'm using a mod called tweak scale which allows me to tweak the scale of parts and for these engines they're smaller than the main fuselage so we'll bring them down to about one meter in diameter and then we'll grab some engines bring them to the same diameter so that they fit very nice and just because I'm a stickler for things looking attached I'll bring these in a little bit now, this plus a circular intake will be all we need for these engines themselves. But, to make these intakes and the blended fuselage, we're going to have to learn a new technique. I call it a built up design, and that harkens back to the days of uh, custom model aircraft building where one would buy a kit full of balsa wood and all that good stuff and then construct it from scratch in one's own home and a built up design is one where you have a uh, generally a balsa wood skeleton for the plane and then it's 
well, built up into a skeleton, and then you've got a uh, covering of fabric. So, as you can see here, we're using these small wing parts to build up a square section. And you'll find that you use this technique a fair bit once you start getting into large designs, especially like Concord, which we will be building at a later date. So now that we've got this top surface done, at least partially, you can get the other wing connector and start making the sides. Now they don't line up perfectly, but that's what we've got the offset tools for. And if we look back at our designs, it ends up pretty well flush with the round engines. So, if you just mouse over, you can see the green highlighting. When you mouse over the root part, everything will be highlighted. So we just offset that, and bring it in until it's just covering the engine here. And then we just alt-click and place it in. Now this won't do entirely because as we see well these are actually fairly straight like that and they end pretty well where they should but now it's time to tweak things so they're a little long so we bring them back with the offset tool and then, now comes the time when we need to tweak the shape with the rotate tool. As I said in the last episode, these tools will save your life when it comes to replicating things. Now, this overhang, that just won't do. So, what we do is get back to a point where these are still flat, and we grab these little wings here. Skew and rotate as before. And what these will allow us to do is to build out a design that looks a little bit more real. Now, it'll be hard to get it exact but that's part of the challenge so keep skewing things and rotating things until we get about the design that we want and if we don't like these overhangs we can just get rid of them and copy over these parts I've done a few built up designs, one almost entirely a Ford Trimotor, which was quite a uh, popular plane in its heyday. Okay, so now for the bottom, it's going to be pretty much the same, except we're going to stop once we get to here. So I'll just go ahead. There we are. So that's our intakes. And if we look down, we can see the compressor discs. It's all looking very nice. Very nice indeed. Now the real plane, to my knowledge, does not have gimbaled engines, so we'll just lock those gimbals. And to make it a bit more sleek, we can bring these in a little further. Now on some designs, you might want to continue these wing pieces over the top to make them completely flat and you can do that on this design if you wish but personally I'm just going to leave it bare now one thing we do want to do at this point is make sure we straddle this out because if you remember all of this is hanging on this one part which is hanging on to this part so it's all just going to be really floppy 
and where we can we hide the struts inside the main structure that way it doesn't become an eyesore now if we see this weird design here we can replicate that very easily with our good friend the rotate tool so with this single part back here just rotate it down a bit and it sort of gets that design but not quite so let's try skewing this down that's looking a bit better and if we bring this in there we are Now, later on, off camera, I'll fill in the bottom of this. But, for now, we'll just leave it bare. Now we just need to put another side piece on. It could be a little tricky to get it to where we need it to be. But, to try and get it at the same angle. I don't think this is going to quite work. At least not without some major fiddling. Okay, it doesn't seem to want to attach to the side of this wing piece like we want it to. So we'll just have to use this piece. Like that. And of course skewed into place actually we can do better and this is really one of the major parts of replicating is just trying to find what parts what parts work for what task sort of match the angle and rotate it to bring it in. And then put it in place. And there we are. So I've got that nice curve design there. And we should just be able to slap something on here. Now if you happen to find wing pieces and stuff sticking through your engine, don't worry. It won't have any effect on it. So there we are. We've got some nice intakes made of wing parts and a built up design. Now one last thing before we get back to making these wings is this part here behind the cockpit a lot of my designs have this feature and all it needs is a tail section stuck on here with surface mount and then tweak scaled down to about 900 or rather 90 percent of its total size And just bring it on down like that. And now, because we surface attached it, we can stick another piece on it like that. Same thing again, scale it down to 900. And there we are. So now the cockpit flows into the rest of the plane. And now it's pretty much just a matter of building the wings and the tail. And it's a rather large tail too. So let's see about building these wings. Now they're a rather interesting design because you've got this sort of... I'm not entirely sure what that design's called but I think it's a dog tooth and the idea is to enhance stability 
So we can do that rather easily just by using these wing parts again. So as you can see it's a bit weird if it's got angle snapping but we just turn that off and it sits nice and flush. But now because these are kind of big wings we can use these parts these square sections of wing and that sweep is obviously greater than 45 degrees so let's see if we can use one of these structural wings to get the sweep that we want I think that's pretty damn close and this is another thing with building multi-part wings like this try and stack them all onto the one part at least if you're working with ferrum I'm not sure if it works with stock aerodynamics as of the new update but prior to the new update, so 0.19 older, this wing here, because it's stuck with its main surface to the side here, as opposed to here, the game won't treat it as a wing as it should. Because with stuck aerodynamics from 0.19 older, this particular wing is designed to go this way through the air. If it goes this way through the air, it just won't work. And Scott Manley explained it a whole lot better than I can, so I'll link his video in the description. So, for this next dog tooth bit, let's see. That's not going to give us the short design that we want. So. Time to do a little experiment. So we've got this little piece here. Let's try rotating it to the same angle as this other piece. Bring it in. That's not quite big enough. see why the sweep on here is too great so we can just set our rotate tool here and hold shift I should have explained that earlier hold shift to get five degree increments as opposed to I think 15 degree increments so five degree increments that looks better so it's five degrees less and that's pretty much on the money. Now, let's try once again to get this sweep down. Hmm. I'll go more into multi-part wings like this in another video but really the trick is to just keep looking for parts that can do what you want them to do now that we've got that we start building out the rest of the wing because before the control surfaces it's got a bit more here. And to keep things on the straight and narrow, try using this part. That way that keeps our wingtip nice and flush. And it may look a bit messy, but it will fly just fine or at least it should. I've got Ferrum Aerospace on this install and time and again it has displayed its rather temperamental disposition when it comes to 
flying designs that ought to work. So because we've got Theorem, we've got more than just the simple checkboxes for our controls. These are basically percentage sliders. So the way we want to set this up is the inboard ones just control pitch, the outboard ones control pitch and yaw. Now it's time for that massive fin, which we should be able to do. rather easily just by using these and for anyone who hasn't used this particular part yet it's in a sweep or it's trailing edge sweep is exactly the same as the leading edge sweep on these wings so you can slot them together like that very very nicely but we don't want to do that we want these parts and you have to turn angle snapping off to get them to sit properly. Sort of trying to find the middle ground. If you can't get them exactly straight, then just use the offset tool. Now, this one sweeps more than that. So let's try rotating it. 10 degrees. Okay. That looks like it's about right. However, didn't mean to completely delete it. Oh well. We might be able to get a bit more accurate with this one. So first off, have it just straight. And then we build out the rudder these pieces so it looks really weird now but then if we roll it back and down make sure it's ah, it's peeking through the bottom a little bit it's not too bad mm, it's a bit small dash what she said I can't believe I just made that joke And I can't s stress this enough. Trial and error are basically the motto of anyone who's trying to do replications in KSP. Try to find something that works, and if it doesn't, try something else. That's the wrong way around. I think I'm just gonna cut while I figure this out. There we are. I've worked it out. So I've used the uh, swept wing and a structural wing to make this nice wide fin and just pitch them back each by 15 degrees. Now we set up our rudder to control your. And now. We can check center of lift. And that is actually quite fine. Although we do need some fuel in this. Let's see if we can pull it a bit closer. There we are. Once again, using oxidizer as ballast. Now you might notice up here in the engineer window that even though I've got fuel in this, it doesn't show any delta V. That's because these engines can't get to that fuel. So we just add in a drop of fuel into these tanks so that these engines can get it. And you could add in more fuel if you want, if you want to fly longer. But now, it's time to put in the landing gear. Now for replications, these gear, these are the um, adjustable landing gear. They are awesome because you can tweak all these parameters, your suspension, your height, your angle. You do all sorts of crazy things with them. But for this particular one, we just want the height. And 
and also we want them to be skewed back so that the wheels are just behind the center of mass so that it'll be easy to rotate off the runway while at the same time being stable on said runway. Now most blueprints will show how it's meant to sit on the runway so this one sits very nose up also it's got four wheel bogies oh no they're two wheel in line well two wheel side by side should do just fine and although it may not look like much it's very hard to tell but this setup should give us about the same nose up attitude So I think it's time to test. We'll save it as the Avro Canada CF one oh five. Save and launch. Now because the center of lift is in front of the center of mass, it's going to be very squirrely and very unstable in the air. But it's a fighter jet, it's meant to be. Just means we're going to have to be very careful with flying it. And apparently it's not stable on the runway. Great. Stand by. There we are. I just added some struts on the front here and shifted them back a little bit. And that's really what you want for any plane is for the main gear to be in such a position that it will sit on the runway as it should but they're not so far back that you won't be able to um, rotate up off the runway before you run off the end of it so because I'm using Ferrum I've got the window up also this GPWS mod You'll hear what that's all about later. And nav HUD. Flying planes with nav HUD is so awesome. So let's just test out controls. Got roll, pitch, and your. And the engines don't move when we do that. So, activate engines, throttle up to full, SAS, brakes off. And as you can see, nav HUD gives us the same information that navball does, just overlaid onto the game world. And it looks like we're overheating. That's alright. It won't last long. Whoa, okay, yep, that's the instability that we talked about. Don't Large think, scale store. Don't think, don't yep, think, there's don't GPWS. Think, don't think. And bang. Okay, what went wrong there? Well, what went wrong was we pitched up way too violently and we stalled. Now the reason why that is, is because we've got these angled wings here. It's going to sacrifice the look of the plane a little bit, but we can try to remedy our instability by tweaking this we're not going to be able to drag that center of mass forward very much if this was stock aerodynamics I just layer this wing but that doesn't work in Ferrum. And by layering the wing, what I mean is basically taking another wing piece, sticking it over the top here. What that would do in stock is that it would treat both these wings separately, so they would both generate lift. My Fireflash shuttle does that. If you've seen that on my DeviantArt page, but what happens with Ferrum is that 
Our center of lift moves forward because it's essentially cancelling out the lift of both these wings. So there's not much we can do except perhaps try to make it a bit more controllable. Now, this is not going to help our center of lift problems any, but putting these little control surfaces here should allow us to control our pitch with a bit more accuracy. And of course the real plane doesn't have this, but these are some of the considerations and concessions you might have to make to make your designs flyable. And feel free to copy me to the letter. Good luck, by the way. But a better idea would be to basically take my design to the starting point and then just work from there. Problem solve on your own. So, being that we're already nosed up on the runway, we should be able to just let it sit here and lift off on its own without running off the end of the runway or the side so just use the rudder to keep you going straight and there we are she's lifted up nose down minor stalling and this is what Ferrum is really notorious for it's making oh jeez Planes nearly impossible to fly. Let's try rolling on its back. And pulling hard. Nope, it's not liking us. Okay. And there we go, we're flipped. This thing does not want to fly. It's at this point that you would eject. And although I have that mod, the uh, Vanguard Parachutes mod, I do not have the module on this plane. Which means, Jeb, you're ditching. Or crashing, whichever. Okay. Terrain, terrain. Pull up, terrain, yep, terrain. that's the train alarm. Recon, Only recon. the wheels survived. That GPWS mod really adds to the atmosphere of your failures. I love it. But at any rate, while we're here, we might as well stick that parachute module on here. Stick on two of them just because. Bury them. Now, I don't know if we'll be able to get this center of lift back at all, but we can try. There are, there are options. Nope, that's the wrong part. Let's try this. going to like us. No, it is not. Oh well. Oh, we can make it flatter on the bottom while we're here. What if we raise it here? Nope, that just makes it worse. Well, it's sort of fitting, I suppose. The real CF-105 was canned due to uh, a bit of controversy, I believe, in budgeting. So, it really never flew anyway.
but at least now we know how to do built up designs and working with parts and mods and I'll have links in the description to both Tweakscale and Ferrum for those who might want it also the uh, landing gear the landing gear and tweak scale are two of the best mods for replication so until next time see you later